I knew I forgot something. All right, we're continuing. Did you record all that? <laughs> we're continuing our study in uh, the great words of Scripture. Uh, remember, we are doing this extensive and long series. We only do it usually about once a month. Sometimes we'll get an extra uh, class in. Uh, but the, the intent is, is that you will have a glossary, not only off of, off of the recordings, but in your hand, a, a book uh, that will give you sort of like a Bible dictionary where you can look up and remember things as you go along uh, that will uh, aid you in your understanding of the Scriptures, uh, which is why we are doing this. Uh, we are all the way up to E. Uh, that doesn't mean we're all empty, but it means that uh, we uh, are... Uh, have made some progress. Now, I don't know exactly how long we have been doing this, uh, but uh, I have a feeling that it will be a little while before we reach the end and get down to Z. What do you think? Yes. Uh, probably. So you just be praying. I've got to live long enough to get us to Z, and after that, I can go home. We hope the Lord comes before then. <laughs> we hope the Lord comes before then. Amen. All right, we're talking about Edom and the Edomites. These are just a couple of refreshers. Uh, Edom, uh, which is uh, the name basically being red, uh, is the other name for Esau, remember? Uh, Esau and Jacob uh, are twin brothers. And uh, the Edomites, or you could call them Esauites, but Edomites are the descendants of Esau. Last time we saw that uh, there was the conflict between, uh, between the brothers that uh, resulted in Esau having a deep-seated hatred uh, toward uh, his brother Jacob. Uh, with the result that that hatred actually has passed down through the years. The, uh, the Edomites, uh, Esau and the Edomites, his descendants, uh, moved into the southern area of today's Jordan, and that is the area of Edom. Um, the Ammonites, the Moabites, the Edomites, all there in modern-day Jordan. Um, but the um, Edomites, it's, it was, uh, the, the land of Edom, let's put it this way, the land of Edom was called red, not because of the fact that Esau went there, but it already carried the name, apparently, and it has to do with the red rock that was in the area. If you remember uh, when we did our, our study um, in Revelation uh, a few lessons ago, we talked about Petra and Basra, and we saw that Petra is called the Rose Red City. It's because of the, the color of the rock that is there. Now, later on, uh, the name became Idumea, which is the Greek name for Edom. <coughs> So now let's look in Numbers chapter 20. Numbers chapter 20. Numbers chapter 20, and let's pick up at verse 14. Remember the Edomites and the Jewish uh, people are related. Now they were then, they are now. So they're all descendants of two brothers. Now if this is the time of the Exodus. Moses is leading the Israelites uh, up, uh, up through the various areas ultimately to come to the edge of the land of Canaan that was their land. So in verse 14 of chapter 20, from Kadesh, Moses then sent messengers to the king of Edom. Now this is long after, of course, Esau is off the scene, so these are his descendants. You know all the hardship that has befallen us, that our fathers went down to Egypt, uh, and we stayed in Egypt a long time, and the Egyptians treated us and our fathers badly. But when we cried out to the Lord, he heard our voice, and sent an angel, and brought us out of Egypt. Now behold, we are at Kadesh, a town on the edge of your territory. Uh, please let us pass through your land. We will not pass through field or through vineyard. We will not uh, even 
drink water from a well. We will go along the King's Highway. That was a ancient highway that was a major um, road for trade. So it wasn't like this road wasn't used. It was quite extensively. Not turning to the right or the left until we pass through your territory. Edom, however, said to him, you shall not pass through us, or I will come out with the sword against you. You see the perpetual hatred. Again, the sons of Israel said to him, We will go up by the highway, and if I or my livestock do drink any of your water, then I will pay its price. Let me only pass through of my feet, nothing else. But he said, You shall not pass through. And Edom came out against him with a heavy force and with a strong hand. Thus Edom refused to allow Israel to pass through his territory. So Israel turned away from him. Look at chapter 21 and verse 4. Then they, that is the Israelites, set out from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. And the people became impatient because of the journey. Uh, you can read more about it in the book of Judges and the conflict that uh, would come up with the Edomites. But uh, at the time of the Exodus, by military force, they came out against the Israelites. They had done nothing to them. They simply wanted to pass through the trade route where people pass through all the time. You, you read what Moses said. We won't even take a drink of water from you. We won't eat a grape. He didn't say this, but we're not going to eat a grape off your vineyards. We're just going to walk through on our feet. Uh, but they would not let them. Why? Well, like we saw last time, there is a thing called the perpetual hatred uh, that is passed down from Esau all the way uh, down through. No logical reason for them to deny this passage, but they did. The land that the Edomites, or the Esauites, uh, fled to later on, uh, whenever they started having problems, because they came under attack by by different groups, uh, predominantly with, uh, with the, the Greeks and so forth. So they were forced to a large extent out of, many years later, out of the area of Edom and came into southern Israel. Uh, as a matter of fact, that's not a, a real clear map up there. It's the best I could find. Uh, but they uh, came out of that area of Edom and over into the new Edom. Remember, Idumea means Edom. Um, and Hebron, if you look up here, Hebron is right here. So this area, this area right along here is called what to today, today's world? It's called the West Bank. It's on the west side of the Dead Sea. <laughs> So you can read in your notes that I gave you, you can read a lot more of your history, but let's go to Psalm 137. There's so much more that I could do with this, and I just hope I can get everything done this time. We already make this a part two series. Psalm 137, verses 7 through 9. Because now it becomes something where the Israelites are recognizing. This is a, a Psalm of David, probably. Um, the Edomites had come out to help Nebuchadnezzar when he attacked Israel. So here's what they said. Remember, O Lord, against the sons of Edom, the day of Jerusalem, who said, raise it, raise it to its very foundation. The Edomites told the Babylonians, take Jerusalem and level it to the ground. Now this was many years after what we just read about. Uh, in this case, now the Edomites are in the southern portion of, of uh, Israel. And Babylon is coming in and they are supporting the Babylonians against their relatives, the Jews. And so, verse 8, O daughter of Babylon, you devastated one. How blessed will be the one who repays you with the recompense with which you have repaid us. He calls the Edomites daughters of Babylon. Verse 9, How blessed will be the one who raises and dashes your little ones against the rock. Uh, you say, man, that's pretty tough stuff. Well, you see, that's exactly what Babylonians did. 
And exactly what many of the Edomites did. They actually came out and took their forces and joined the Babylonians to fight against. And uh, there are certain ones within history that say the greatest violence done against the Jews was not by the Babylonians, but by the Edomites. Uh, but later on, uh, I mean earlier on, they had been driven out of Edom by what's called the Nabataeans. I mentioned that. But anyway, in 70 AD, I'm having to skip so much history here, it's a little confusing, but in 70 AD, the Romans, when they were coming against Israel, they used some 20,000 Edomites as their allies when they attacked Jerusalem. So uh, we have gone down all the way from, from the time of, of um, Isaac, the birth of the boys, and the problems that they had, all the way up through the time of the Exodus, all the way up to the 586 B.C. attack of the Babylonians, and here it is again at the time of the Romans, and they are still attacking their brothers and sisters. They're attacking the Jewish people. Um, even though Rome later turned on the Idumeans, many did survive, with the result that they scattered out to many different places. Many of those people in the years that followed went up into today what is called Bosnia. During World War II, the, 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 the Mufti of Jerusalem, whose name escapes me at the moment, uh, was highly supporting, the Mufti is an is a Islamic religious head over Jerusalem, over, the, over, over uh, the Dome of the Rock area and so forth. Uh, he was extremely anti-Semitic. He, uh, because of some of the things he did that involved the British and so forth at the time of World War II, he fled and he went to Germany. Uh, this Mufti was extremely pro-Hitler. It is recorded by many, although doubted by some, but it recorded by many, uh, including Netanyahu who mentioned it recently, that this Mufti is one of the major ones that helped Hitler with the final solution, which was the killing of what amounted to more than six million Jews. Uh, he was one of the main ones that helped push Hitler towards this. Then in Bosnia, he went up there and he recruited a whole uh, battalion of, of people, Muslims, who joined Hitler's army to go fight and kill Jews. Uh, you can look into your history books and you can see all of these things. But what we're seeing is, is that now we're up into World War II, and guess what? The hatred is still there. The everlasting hatred. Um, now, there, not all of the, of the uh, Idumeans and the Edomites left and went to the Bosnia area. Many stayed where they were, but they scattered out into various places around. Well, we can take several twists and turns through history, and... To a large extent, we discover that the modern-day Palestinians are the Edomites. The perpetual hatred continues. Now, those that are called, quote-unquote, Palestinians today are a mixed bag of people. Many of them are, 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 are other descendants of Abraham, uh, not coming through, through Esau. Uh, many of them are Ishmaelites. Saudi Arabia, for example, are Ishmaelites mostly. Uh, but they're also mixed in with the Palestinians. Remember, Ishmael was another son of Abraham. Uh, and others. But to a large extent, uh, the modern-day Palestinians are the descendants of Esau. So it's interesting whenever you look at what's going on on television and these people fighting for land. And guess what? This goes back 2,500 years. So when somebody comes around and says, well, you know what? We're going to have the two-state solution. We're going to get peace between the Jews and between Israel and the Palestinians. Guess what? It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. If it hadn't been solved in 2,500 years, it's not going to be solved by any president of the United States or any leader of Great Britain or anybody else. But here's something that's interesting. Recent genetic testing that has been done, they have discovered indeed that many of the Palestinians are related to the Jews. 
Now there's two different aspects of that. One is they come from two different brothers, so of course there's going to be genetic markers that are the same. But there are those who make this argument, that as the Jews were scattered, many of them were in Babylon and all over the Middle East and so forth, many of them came under Muslim control. Now if you know anything about Muslim control, when the Muslims get in control, you have basically only three options. One, become Muslim. Two, pay what's called the Dehemi tax, and you're treated like a second-class citizen. You can't even make sure that you have a hat any higher than any Muslim around you. Uh, you never look Muslims in the eye, you look down, and you pay this heavy tax that virtually devastates you. What's your third option? Yes. Die. That's not a lot of good options there. Um, the many Jews apparently assimilated and became Muslims. And it is interesting, there's so many different things that, that are coming out and some things that, that many people living in the West Bank area, it's one of the highlight areas of, of the Edomites, actually still have followed, at least up until maybe the current generation, a lot of things of Jewish practices that they remember from their fathers and grandfathers and great-grandfathers and great-great-grandfathers and so forth. Uh, it's amazing and interesting, and I wish I could bring it all, all out to you. But, interestingly enough, uh, they apparently are descendants from Jews forced to convert to Islam many centuries ago. In some areas, as much as 85 to 90 percent of Palestinians show Jewish origin. And you know what else is fascinating in that? I don't think I put it in here. Is that many of them show descent from the Levites, the Kohites, the, the priests. The priestly class. As I was reading an article on this, this one, one uh, interviewer said, well, what is your son going to do when he discovers that instead of Palestinian, he's Jewish? She said, well, we'll deal with it when it happens. <laughs> but the perpetual hatred continues all the way through the descendants of Esau uh, to this very day. Uh, even those who think they're descendants of Esau. There's many Palestinians that think they come from Esau that didn't. They're from Ishmael or from some of the other descendants. But they're all related. They are thinking all related to Abraham. Most of them practice the Muslim religion, which is satanic. Now go to Psalm 83.6. You're in the Psalms. Go to Psalm 83.6. Now there's many things about Psalm 83 that I'm looking at and researching and trying to understand better. But Psalm 83 and verse 6. Uh, well, let me go beyond verse 6. Uh, let's begin at verse 1. We'll go down through 6. O God, do not remain quiet. Do not be silent, O God. Do not be still. For behold, your enemies make an uproar. And those who hate you have exalted themselves. They make shrewd plans against your people and conspire together against your treasured ones. Who is the your people and treasured ones? Jews. Jews. They have said, Come, let us wipe them out as a nation that the name of Israel be remembered no more. Does that sound familiar? You can... It is said every day in Iran and many other places across the Middle East, and it is the greatest goal of the Palestinians, so-called. For they have conspired together with one mind against you, they make a covenant, the tents of Edom and the Ishmaelites, Moab and the Hagarines, and he goes down and listens. What's fascinating is that after the wars of 1948 and 1967, a large group of people left Israel, some because they were encouraged to leave by the Jews, many of them because they were encouraged to leave by the Arabs. The Arabs told most of them to get out because the Arab armies were going to attack and destroy Israel. Again in 1973, wasn't it? 73, I think it was. 
those people went out and they became what is known as the Palestinian refugees. Although there's the massive land mass all around Israel could absorb them wonderfully, those countries will not let them assimilate. They will not give them a place. They want, quote unquote, Palestinian refugees. To this day, all these years later, a large number of, number of them live in tent cities. The tents of Eden. Now that just blows your mind, doesn't it? Refugee camps. Bill Solis in his book on Psalm 83, he says, here it lies the problem. The Middle East conflict is, is the derivative of the descendants of these two former nations attempting to reclaim the land of Israel, Palestinian. Remember it was named Palestine by the Romans after the, uh, uh, the, the second Jewish revolt that happened about 136. And they named it Palestine, Palestinia, uh, in a reflection of the term Philistines because they're trying to get rid of the name Israel. He goes on to say, this may seem an oversimplification of the matter. However, it is at the root of the conflict. Both formerly notorious nations who experience their decline at the same time and in the same place are attempting to pick up where they left off in 70 AD. Who are the two nations that experience decline? The Jews and the Edomites. I do mean this. That's something interesting. Go to Ezekiel chapter 35. Ezekiel chapter 35, verses 6 through 9. How is the situation ever going to be resolved? Well, the Lord tells us. Isaiah 30, excuse me, Ezekiel 35, beginning verse 6. Therefore, as I live, declares the Lord. He's talking about, verse 2, say your face against Mount Seir. Verse 3, I'm against you, Mount Seir. Remember, Mount Seir is the land of Edom. These are the Edomites he's talking to. I will give you over to bloodshed, and bloodshed will pursue you. Since you have not hated bloodshed, therefore bloodshed will pursue you. Does that sound like the modern conflict? But now look what the Lord says. Verse 7, I will make Mount Seir a waste and a desolation. I will cut off from it the one who passes through and returns. I will fill its mountains with its slain. On your hills and in your valleys and in all your ravines, those slain by the sword will fall. I will make you an everlasting desolation and your cities will not be inhabited. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Now, stay there. The Edomites have a perpetual hatred. It's called that perpetual desolation, the everlasting desolation in here. So because of that, the Lord said, I'm going to make you a desolation. Because you have that everlasting hatred, I'm going to have an everlasting hatred against you. Because you want to make Israel a desolate place, I'm going to make your land a desolate place. Now let's look at verses 10 through 15. Here's the reason for the destruction. Because you said, because you have said, these two nations, what are the two nations? Edom and Israel. And these two lands will be mine. And we will possess them. Now that's what they have always tried to do. Drive out the Jews. They want to take over their land. And he says, although the Lord was there. Verse 11, therefore as I live, declares the Lord, I will deal with you according to your anger and according to your envy, which you showed because of your hatred against them, that is the Jews. So I will make myself known among them when I judge you. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have heard all your revilings which you have spoken against the mountains of Israel. By the way, the mountains of Israel are in the West Bank. They are laid desolate. They are given to us for food. And you have spoken arrogantly against me and have multiplied your words against me. And I have heard it. Therefore, says the Lord, as the earth rejoices, I will make you a desolation. Now, that becomes important in just a minute. As you rejoiced over the inheritance of the house of Israel because it was desolate, so I will do to you. 
You will be a desolation on Mount Seir and Edom, all of it. Then they will know that I am the Lord. Just as Esau had given away the covenant rights voluntarily, when he sold his rights, and then when he left the land of Canaan to his brother, the Edomites to this day want that land back. They claim it's their land, even though it belongs to the nation of Israel, even though God had told Esau, I don't give you the land of Edom. God gave it to him. But Israel was, Canaan land was given to the Jewish people. Go to Jeremiah chapter 49. Jeremiah chapter 49. 49. Well, if I can ever get there, I'll be fine. <laughs> Jeremiah 49, verses 7 through 13. Jeremiah 49, verse 7. Concerning Edom, this is prophecy of Jeremiah against Edom. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Is there no longer any wisdom in Teman? Teman is north Edom. He says, Is there no wisdom left there? What's he saying? Why are you so stupid? Has good counsel been lost to the prudent? Has their wisdom decayed? Flee away, turn back, dwell in the depths, O inhabitants of Deden. Deden is Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia does not support the Edomites. Saudi Arabia, in, in many ways, has, has given some assistance for the Palestinians, but they are not strong supporters of them. The main reason they're not in the modern age is because the, the Palestinians are supported by Iran. Iran and Saudi Arabia are heartfelt enemies of each other. For I will bring disaster, the disaster of Esau upon him at the time I punish him. If great gatherers come to you, would they not leave gleanings? If thieves come by night, they would destroy only until they had enough. But I have stripped Esau bare. I have uncovered his hiding places. Uh, so that he will not be able to conceal himself. His offspring have been destroyed along with his relatives and his neighbors, and he is no more. Leave your orphans behind. I will keep them alive, and let your widows trust in me. For thus says the Lord, Behold, those who were not sentenced to drink the cup will certainly drink it. And are you the one who will be completely acquitted? I don't have time to go through all this, but you will not be acquitted, but you will certainly drink it. For I have sworn by myself, declares the Lord, that Basra, where's Basra? Southern Edom, close, close, close to Petra, will become an object of horror, a reproach, a ruin, a curse, and all its cities will be perpetual ruins. I go down to verse 19. Behold, one will come up like a lion from the thickets of Jordan against the perennial water pasture. Um, for in an instant I will make him run away, and whoever is chosen I will appoint over it. For who is like me, and who will summon me into court? And who then is the shepherd who can stand against me? By the way, Basra means sheepfold. Therefore hear the plan of the Lord which he has planned against Edom and his purposes, which he has purposed against inhabitants of Teman. Surely they will drag them off, even the little ones of the flock. Surely he will make their pasture desolate because of them. The earth is quaked at the noise of their downfall. There is an outcry. The noise of it has been heard at the Red Sea. When does all of this happen? I'm ahead of myself a little bit. Behold, he will mount up the Lord and swoop like an eagle and spread out his wings against Basra. The hearts of the mighty man of Edom in that day will be like the heart of a woman in labor. Folks, that's the second coming. Remember this. A lot of people think of the second coming, the first place Jesus goes to is the Mount of Olives. He does it. The first place he goes to is Basra. Petra, southern Edom. You'll see this more as we do our Bible prophecy. The theme of the, of the book of Obadiah. Obadiah. Hmm. The theme of the book of Obadiah. Go to it. The theme of the book of Obadiah is the destruction of Edom. i got to hurry. 
verses 5 through 9. If thieves come to you of robbers by night, oh, how you will be ruined. Would they not steal only until they had enough of great gatherers come to you? Would they not leave some leanings? What's he saying? I'm going to destroy you so much that it's not like someone who's gathered great throw us going to leave something behind. I'm not going to leave anything behind. Oh, how Esau will be ransacked and his hidden treasure searched out. All the men allied with you will send you forth to the border, and the man at peace with you will deceive you and overpower you. They who eat your bread will set an ambush for you. There is no understanding in him. Will I not on that day, declares the Lord, destroy wise men from Edom and destroy uh, from un and, and understanding from the mountain of Esau? Then your mighty man will be dismayed, O king. Then your mighty man will, will be dismayed, I just read that, so that everyone may be cut off from the mountain of Edom by slaughter. Why? Verse 10. Because of violence to your brother. Do you know what the word in Hebrew is for violence? Hamas. Hamas. I just find that too interesting. You'll be covered with shame. You'll be cut off forever. On the day that you stood aloof, on the day that strangers carried off his wealth, and foreigners entered into his gate. That was Babylon at this time and cast lots for Jerusalem, you too were as one of them. Do not gloat over your brother's day, the day of his misfortune. Do not rejoice over the sons of Judah um, uh, in, in the day of their destruction. You want to see the Palestinians dance? Just let them know that they killed a bunch of Jews. What's the Lord saying? Don't do that. Don't do that. Uh, do not enter the gate of my people. That would be especially the Temple Mount on the day of their disaster. Yes, you do not gloat over their calamity in the day of their disaster. Do not loot their wealth in the day of their disaster. And so forth. Go to verse 15. For the day of the Lord draws near on all nations. Now look at this. Here's the Abrahamic covenant in work. Curse for cursing kind. Remember what's it say? I will bless those that bless you. I will curse those that curse you. The way you treat Israel is the way you're going to be treated. As you have done, it will be done to you. Your dealings will return on your own head. You go on down through verse 21. It gives us the timing of the destruction. Let's look at it real quick. But on Mount Zion, there will be those who escape. That's the Jewish remnant. It will be holy. And the house of Jacob will possess their possessions. This is the time of the second coming on the Temple Mount that, uh, that is going to be rebuilt. And the house of Judah will be a fire. The house of Joseph's a flame. So who are the ones then that are going on the attack? Not only with the Lord, but who else is attacking? The Jewish people. The Jewish military, I would assume. But the house of Jacob will be a stubble. They will be set on fire and consume them so that there will be no survival of the house of Esau. You catch that? No survivor of the house of Esau. I would say the only exception to that would be those who have become believers in Jesus Christ, of which there are some. Then the house of the Negev will, those of the Negev will possess the mountain of Esau. Um, and let's see, come on down real quick. And uh, verse 21. The deliverers will ascend Mount Zion. To judge the mountain of Esau and the kingdom will be the Lord's. They have control of the Temple Mount. It will be regained after the second coming in full. We could go on to Ezekiel 25, 12 to 14. We're out of time. It reinforces what we just said. That the Jewish people are the means whereby God's going to destroy the last of the Edomites. It seems logical that this is going to happen during the campaign of Armageddon because of what we read in the previous the second coming happens first at Basra. Petra, the former land of Edom, Esau 34, verses 1 through 7. The reason is because, if you remember, that the Jewish people in the middle of the tribulation have fled out into the wilderness. We'll be studying some of that again tonight and looking at things dealing with the war in heaven on Revelation. You don't want to miss it in Revelation 12. Uh, but that's where they're going to be. So much of, of why the Lord comes there is because it's a rescue event to the Jewish people. Isaiah 34, 8 through 15, the land area of Edom and southern Jordan. Remember the Lord said it will be desolate during the millennial kingdom. It's one of two spots 
that are desolate, that are not revitalized during the millennial reign of Christ. And it will actually be a habitation for demons during the Messianic kingdom. So where Edom was, where Edom opposed Israel, where Edom through the centuries has opposed Israel, they are always following whom? Satan. Satan. So what's going to happen to Edom? It's going to become not the inhabitation of Satan, because he's in the abyss during the millennium, but a habitation for demons. Just like Babylon. Two places on planet Earth. All right, we're out of time. We're over time, actually. Father in heaven, thank you for this time around your word. We pray, Father, that we will see the current events that go on in the Middle East in the light of the plans of you, in the light of the fact that Israel is the apple of your eye. And Father, even though the nation of Israel in today's world is not the, the redeemed Israel that will be during the coming millennial kingdom, we thank you that prophecy is being fulfilled. And Lord, we thank you for the understanding that with the current conflicts that happen in the Middle East, that nothing is going to be solved until you arrive. So we pray for the peace of Jerusalem, Lord, which will come on the day that the Prince of Peace arrives. Even so come, Lord Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen.